first of all, uh, thank you guys for staying up late. I know this is <laughs> it's, it's a long day today. I'm really excited to kind of welcome Eric Stokes to the Packer family. Um, really excited to have a chance to select him. Um, really good corner in the SEC, played for Georgia. You know, he's got the excellent size. We look forward six one. He's about 195 pounds. Uh, just rare athlete, premier speed, and uh, just a great kid. So we're, we're, we're excited to add him to our group and um, see what he can do this, this, uh, this season. All right, we'll start. Um, Rob Domofsky. Hey, Brian, I'm sure we'll get to plenty of, of draft stuff, but i got to mm -hmm. ask you, how can you make this work with Aaron after what happened today? Yeah, Rob, I'm not going to get a, a ton of specifics, but I think, you know, obviously, you know, he's our, he's our quarterback, he's our leader. Um, we've been working through this for, you know, a little while now. And, um, you know, I just think uh, it may take some time, but, um, you know, he, he's, he's the guy that kind of makes this thing go. So he's, he gives us the best chance to win, and, and we're going to work towards that end. Matt Schneiman. Brian, do you, do you think Aaron's ever going to play again for you guys? How, how can you convince him to come back and play for you after he, he seems to be, at least if the reports are accurate, that, that he has no interest in doing that? Yeah, I'm not going to speak for Aaron, obviously, but uh, no, I think obviously we, we've got a really good team, um, and I do think he'll play for us again. Um, and we're going to, like I said, we're going to work towards that, and we've been working towards that uh, on a, a number of different fronts. Um, you know, the value that he has to our football team is, is really immeasurable. You know what I mean? He brings so much to the table, not only as a player, but a leader. Um, so important to his teammates, to his coaches. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's the goal. Bill Huber. Hey, Brian, how does it get to this point where the two most important people in the franchise, you could probably argue, um, have kind of gone down this road? Bill, I'm not sure exactly, you know, uh, I don't know if I understand your question, but I'll just say that, you know, I think uh, obviously there's some things that uh, are hard sometimes, but as, as you, you know, as we go down this road, I think it's, uh, it, I think you got to keep in mind, you know, how much we want Aaron to be here and how important he is to our organization. Um, so I think, like I said, I'm optimistic and we'll, and we'll see how it unfolds. Ryan Wood. Ryan, I asked you in February if there was any scenario that you could see trading Aaron, and you said absolutely not at that time. Has that changed? Is there any scenario that you can see trading Aaron Rodgers this offseason? No, no, Ryan, I appreciate the question, but no, we're not going to trade Aaron Rodgers. Rob Reichel. Hey, Brian, uh, hey, Rob. you guys had so much drama in the summer of 08, and, and I know you were around and you remember that well. You know, I, I remember talking to guys, and I know it was very hard for them to focus on football because there was so mm -hmm. much going on off the field. You know, are you worried you're headed down that path again? Well, I'm always concerned about the team. And, and to be honest with you, you know, I was I was here for a brief time, and then and then I was out on the road scouting. So uh, certainly, you know, lived through it a little bit, but not probably to the extent that some did. Um, but always concerned about our team, and, and, and that's always what's most important to us. Steve McGargy. I was just wondering when, if y'all, if anybody, whether you, Mark, or Matt, could communicate with Aaron today, or when was the last time any of y'all spoke directly with him? Yeah, I, I won't go into specifics, but we, there was communication with Aaron today. Um, there's been communication with Aaron, um, you know, a lot over the past, uh, you know, six, eight weeks. So, um, but there was communication today. Mike Clemens. Tell your fans the difficulty in the balance of doing the best for your team by taking Jordan last year and at the same time keeping Aaron on track in Green Bay. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, every decision that we make here is what's in the best interest for the Green Bay Packers. We don't always get it right, uh, but that's, that is always the intent. And um, again, um, not everybody's going to like the things we do, but, but when we go about it, it's what's best for the Green Bay Packers. Ross Uglum. Ross, hey, Brian. Oh, no, I, I just had gotcha. to unmute. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, with with Eric, you know, the, you guys have always said sign guys for um, sign guys for need, and then and then draft for value. But corner looked like a pretty big need. Where did you see Eric fitting in with your team that, frankly, bring, brings back all two or three starters if you're playing nickel at the corner position? Yeah, I, I, that'll be determined as we get into training camp and how things unfold. But uh, 
I think as I looked at it, you know, uh, not only for this year, but going forward um, in the future, I think, you know, we only have, I think, one corner under, under contract for, for next year. So um, we certainly um, needed to add um, to that to that room. And uh, as we as we went through the process uh, today, uh, he was just kind of sticking out like a sore thumb up on our board. And uh, we were just uh, didn't really think he'd have a chance to get there. We thought maybe when we started, there might be an outside chance. But as the board fell uh, and some of those corners went off early, uh, we weren't really sure if we were going to be able to, you know, he was going to get to us, and we were really excited that he did. Mike Spofford. Hey, Brian. So what did you see from Eric in, in studying his film that, you know, allowed him to go from not having any interceptions in college to then, you know, he gets four in ten games this last year in Georgia. Mm -hmm. What did you see about his game that, that changed well, I think he steadily, you know, he played a lot at Georgia from an early time there and, and, and steadily kind of grew as a player. You know, the things that really stick out about him, his explosiveness is off the charts. He's a strong, strong athlete. Um, and I think just uh, they do a great job down there at Georgia uh, training those guys. And I think as he continued to play in the SEC, I think you saw his confidence just kind of grow and grow and grow. Uh, that kind of led him to have the year that he had this year. Um, as we got to know him through this process, um, he just fit our profile of not only a player but a person. And um, like, like I said, I think he's going to be a great fit, not only uh, on the field but in our locker room. Tom Silverstein? Yeah, Brian, sorry. Hey, Tom. To just go back to Rogers real quickly. Surely. Uh, do you anticipate him taking part in any of your offseason stuff? Has he told you that he won't be doing that? Again, you know, Tom, I'm not getting into conversations we've had, but um, we certainly would want him to. It's all voluntary, as you guys know. So, um, you know, I get, we'll work through that as we go. Jason Wilde. Hey, Goody, I'll try not to sound so exasperated today. Even Schneider yep. was giving me grief about that today. I like your questions, Jason, because you give me time to think about them. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> well, this will be short then. You said you're optimistic mm -hmm. about Rodgers. Why? What gives you that optimism? I just think I think we you know obviously we have a very good football team here and we have a great organization. Uh, we're very committed to him, and um, I'm just I think you know as as the lines of communications have been open, um, I'm just optimistic that uh, that's what's best for the Green Bay Packers, and I truly believe that's what's best for Aaron Rodgers as well. Aaron Nagler, Brian, it's your first time in charge of the draft that you haven't traded up in the first round were there any conversations Did, were there any phone calls made or absolutely yeah. content to stick at 29 no you know there, there were uh um it's always hard when you're picking in the back half of that draft to watch all those guys come off so uh we had some conversations um you know we got we have a number of picks this year we're excited to, to use them as many as we can uh, but we had some conversations it just wasn't i don't think it was in the cards we had some conversations about moving back too, just uh, in case um, you know we were left without a player to pick. But um, when, once we got there, we did have some options to move back, but we just we didn't want to pass up Eric. Matt Reynoldson, Brian, you obviously planned for this day for an extremely long time, and mm -hmm. then a bombshell goes public at two o'clock mm -hmm. in the afternoon. I just kind of want a glimpse into your world. How do you guys react? When something like that happens, especially something that you've probably obviously been talking with Aaron about for several months. Yeah, I think, you know, I think you try to stay, you know, as steady as you can. And that's really through through everything. Uh, every day you try to stay as steady as you can, because I think that's what's best for the organization. Um, today, I think, you know, the most important thing today was the draft, because we needed to keep our, you know, our focus on the task at hand, because um, there is a lot of noise. There's, there's a lot of noise with the draft anyways. Um, so yeah, again, it's, uh, I'm not saying it's easy, but at the same time, I think it's, uh, that's really important. Um, the organization comes first and, and we had, we had something we needed to do today and tomorrow and then on Saturday that is very, very important to our football team. So, um, I think just, you know, keeping, staying focused, uh, on the task at hand and, and, um, you know, just quite frankly with the scouting part of it, that's, you know, that's, I can get lost in that. Andy Herman. Hey, Brian, I'm sure Jordan Love was unequivocally the best quarterback on your board a season ago. Obviously, you went up to get him. But how much does that potential effect on your franchise quarterback, the aforementioned potential drama, the continuous media questions? How much does that go into your decision? And in hindsight, would you have handled anything differently? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I appreciate you asking it. Um, 
certainly it's something you think about. Uh, I certainly look back uh, to last year's draft and, and just kind of uh, maybe some of the communication issues we could have done better. There's no doubt about it. Um, the draft's an interesting thing. It can kind of unfold differently than you think it's going to unfold, and it happens pretty fast. Um, but certainly I think looking back on it, certainly where we sit today, um, there could have been some communication things that we did better. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Tim Van Boren. Uh, good evening, Brian. Good evening. Um, you, uh, you guys always preach the togetherness that you know, we're all in this together. For, I, I guess every team does, but certainly the Packers <laughs> always have. How difficult is a day like this when it becomes at least perceived as though there's, there's a real division there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know, you hate, you hate for the perception to be something that may be you know, more than in, in what it is, and that, that, that can be tough sometimes. But um, we have a great – uh, organization and we have really good people here led by Mark Murphy and um, you know working with Matt and Russ and Mark um, you know there's a lot of support there and, and I think you feel really good about that so yeah I mean there's always in the National Football League there's going to be tough days there's no doubt about that and um, but that's part of the gig you know so um, you know we'll get through them and, and we'll, we'll get to the other side of it. Matt Schneidman. Brian uh, John Lynch mentioned earlier today that he called and was quickly hung up on how many teams called not making an official offer, but at least inquired about trying to trade for Aaron. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't talk to John today. Um, you know, sometime after five o'clock, after a lot of this stuff, it kind of hit uh, the airways. I got, uh, I think uh, one call. Um, it was very brief and, and um, that was it. So. Bill Huber. Hey, Brian, that was actually my question mm-hmm. on Aaron. Um, so I'll, I'll pass. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Ryan, Ryan Wood. Ryan, you're optimistic, and Aaron is saying that he won't return. How long can this be tenable if, if this stalemate continues? Do you have an idea in your mind of how long you guys can be not together on this? Yeah, Ryan, I appreciate the question. It's, it's kind of a hypothetical, and, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, you know, like I said, our, our desire is to have Aaron as our quarterback. Uh, and leading this team and, and competing for championships. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a hypothetical. So we'll get to that. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Jason Wilde. Buddy, I know these drafts are all individual entities of their own, but mm-hmm. this is now between you and Ted. Out of your last 10 first round picks, nine have been defensive players and one was Jordan. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything to that pattern? And is there any expectation to say, you know, it'd be nice to have gotten more out of those first round picks on that side of the ball as you stand here today. Yeah, I'd have to you know, just have to go back and look at them, quite frankly. Um, but um, I don't. There's nothing that I don't. There was no design, if that's what you're asking. I think it was just that's the way the board fell. Um, you know, I know over the past three years, um, you know, I guess four years now, um, you know, I think there was an intent. I think from 18 on, when when I kind of took over, that I thought we needed to get our defense to a level um, if we really wanted to compete for championships. I knew offensively we had um, a really good nucleus. Uh, obviously, last year was uh, was evident of that. But um, I did think we needed to, you know, to add to our defense, and, and whether it was free agency, the draft, we, we've done that. And I think we've gotten to a point now where you know, we're right at the kind of the tipping point of being a dominant, dominant defense. So, um, But before that, that would be, you know, I'd have to kind of, kind of go back and look pick by pick. Tom Silverstein. Brian, uh, you know, sometimes the end of the first round can be kind of a nowhere land. Yeah. Um, and as you're watching um, 24, 25, 26, what were you thinking? Um, were you expecting some kind of a run on, on a position? And, and where did you think you were at that point? Yeah, I think um, I appreciate the question. So I think we, we had some options to kind of move up into those low 20s, mid 20s. We were looking at some of those things in case those runs that you talk about happened and we felt like we were going to maybe get wiped out at, at, at one of the places we might want to go. Um, it just didn't fall that way, so we felt comfortable staying where we were. In fact, our board held up really, really well. I thought you know, there, was an, there might have been an opportunity to move back if, uh, if Eric might have gotten taken ahead of us and, and, and had a chance to, to move back and maybe pick up a couple of picks. But when, when he was sitting there, I just thought it was the best thing for the Packers, and uh, we were really excited to get him. Aaron Nagler. Speaking of Eric, where do you project him, at least initially, competing? I mean, obviously you brought back Kevin. Do you see him 
competing for an outside spot opposite Jair. Are you thinking he might, he and King are on the outside. You might kick Jair inside. Where, where, how are you thinking as far as competition goes? Yeah, I think, I think obviously that'll be determined as we get Eric into the building with our group. I think Jair has, you know, the, the versatility to kind of do anything. And I think as we move through it, um, you know, and get Eric into that group, I mean, it's going to be we, – we do have some pretty good experienced players with Kevin, Shannon Sullivan, Jair, um, you know, Josh Jackson, Kadar Holman. We, we've got a good group of, of players. Um, but I do think, you know, Eric's pretty quick study – and uh, I think he'll get in that mix uh, somehow, some way, eventually. Um, you know, hopefully this season. Um, he's a he's a kind of a rare talent athlete, and uh, I think once the mental part of our defense, once he masters that, I think he'll be able to contribute. Rob Reichel. Hey Brian, I I know you said you didn't want to get into specifics with some of your conversations with Rogers, but mm -hmm. there was one report out tonight that said you guys told Rogers, or you told Rogers that you would trade him this off season. Do, do you want to address that at all? Is sure. This no, that's a, it's absolutely false. There's, there's no truth to that whatsoever. Um, you know, sitting with Jason Wallers uh, through some of this, uh, there's, there's a lot of false, false reporting going on right now. And that's particularly one thing that never happened. Ross Uglum. Hey, Brian, uh, mm -hmm. in your tenure as GM, every off season, you've at least been able to do something in free agency. And, and of course with COVID and the cap shrinking, you haven't, has there been a different stress or a different process leading up to this year's draft with kind of without being able to add guys from other teams? Yeah. I kind of addressed this, you know, when I talked earlier this week, I think, you know, I, I, and I understand the question uh, we did, we were able to sign some pretty good guys from our own team. And that was our focus to start out with. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, if you would ask before COVID hit, as we entered into this off season, um, that that probably wouldn't have been our plan, but uh, so certainly we were restricted in some ways. But uh, at the same time, I don't know before that if I th I would thought we would have been able to extend David and Kenny and Aaron Jones and bring back Kevin King and uh, some of the things that we've done. So um, yeah, I mean, I think it certainly COVID changed the world for all of us. Lance Allen. Ryan, obviously, uh, Eric has unbelievable speed that you can't teach. You know, the four two five forty on on pro day proves that. What uh, convinced you by either watching him or the film or whatever that he's very instinctual to go along with that speed? Yeah, again, it's uh, I think it's probably the course of watching him for the last couple of years, but uh, and, and his growth. But uh, you know, they had a, they had a really good secondary there at Georgia this year, and um, and just watching him kind of go from a really talented athlete, maybe his first year or so, to to where he was the last year and a half. Um, you know, he's just um, he's he's really got a a great upside, but he's he he's a a really good football player right now, and um, you know I think the sky's the limit. Andy Herman. Hey Brian, I know so much goes into this process, but was mm -hmm. there a play, a game, something in his interview, or an aha moment that you had that put him high enough on your board uh, to have him selected today? <laughs> I don't know if there was an aha moment. I mean, the four two nine always you know kind of gets your attention, but. We actually, I think, uh, before any of that, um, we go through our process in February with our scouts. Um, you know, Pat Moore, our, our area scout that does that area, does a fantastic job. It was very high on him early. Um, and then I think before he, he tested and we really got to see him as an athlete, we, we interviewed him. And he's such a genuine human being. Uh, I think, you know, the Packer fans are going to love him. Uh, he's just uh, – He's a quality human being that's really driven, has overcome a lot of adversity, I think, in his young life. And, um, you know, and then obviously, um, you know, being a, a top player in the SEC and a rare athlete, it just the, the you know, as you check the boxes, he just kind of, he added up. We'll do two more. Jason Wilde. Hey, Goody, going mm -hmm. back to what you said about last year's draft briefly, um, you and I both think the world of Ron Wolf, mm -hmm. and he's one of the all-time greats to ever do this. But you know the story he's told about thinking he was going to get Ray Lewis, and then he gets picked, and he ends up taking John Michaels and admitting that was a mistake. Um, did you have a Ray Lewis moment last year to some degree? Um, I think there were a lot of people that thought you were going to take Brandon Ayuk uh, at 25, and that's where the 49ers took him. Was there a similar situation there, or is that not a parallel? No, not a parallel. I think um, certainly I think as we went into the draft last year, Jason, I don't want to go backwards too far here, but we, we had a lot of thoughts about, you know, receivers and different things and maybe moving up. Um, the, the draft didn't fall that way. 
Um, so we ended up going a different route, but we were, you know, like I said, we didn't expect Jordan to be there. We we're exceptionally happy that he was, and um, you know, we're excited for his development. He's got a long way to go, but we're excited for his development. So, um, no, I mean, I think that that Ray Lewis one that you talk about, that and it's, there's more stories that go with that one. Um, it could kind of probably live in, live in history here in the Green Bay Packers building, but uh, you know, I, I I still think back to what. You know Reggie White, Ray Lewis, and Brett Favre could have done. You know what I mean? It was, it, but um, that that last year was not one of those moments. And last one, Tom Silverstein. Hey Brian, did you study um, or spend a particular amount of time on Stokes when he was playing Alabama, LSU uh, yes. against those wide receivers? And can you do you recall anything that kind of showed you uh, that he can play? Yeah, I think you know Tom. I think. More than that, we've probably watched those that tape, specifically the Alabama this year tape, um, uh, more than you know, we probably in the old days when it was beta tapes, we would have wore it out. There's no doubt about it um, with those guys that those cats they had running around. But yeah, I mean, we always start with the best competition. Uh, so when you're watching a corner, it's immediately you go to the, the high powered offenses and receivers, and there was none better than you know Alabama this year. So spent a lot of time on that. Certainly LSU's offense last year. Um, spent a lot of time there looking at different things, but um, yeah, we've um, I've seen that those I've seen those games more than I than I you know wanted to.